Hello and welcome to the Kufi Weekly. I'm your host, Kasim Hafiz. What I want to talk about is two texts which were released on February 14th. Very different years, but how those two texts really give us an insight into one of the biggest rivalries in the Middle East today, Israel and Iran. Of course, Iran has been the much more belligerent towards Israel, seeking its destruction and bragging about how they will wipe Israel off the face of the earth. February 14th marks the anniversary of the release of a pamphlet by Theodor Herzl called The Judenstaat, the Jewish state. Theodor Herzl, the father of modern political Zionism, wrote this seminal work, which many credit as being the starting point of the modern political Zionist movement. Zionism is not a new ideology. For thousands of years, Jews have yearned to return to the land of Israel and Jerusalem. So I just want to read a quick snippet from Herzl's book. The idea I have developed in this pamphlet is an ancient one. It is the restoration of the Jewish state. The decisive factor is our propelling force. And what is that force? The plight of the Jews. I am profoundly convinced that I am right, though I doubt that I shall live to see myself prove so. Today, those who inaugurate the movement are unlikely to live to see its glorious culmination. It was written February 14th, 1896. It was released February 14th, 1896. Herzl didn't see the rebirth of the State of Israel. He was right. But the State of Israel was reborn. And he lays out in his book how he wants Israel to be a democracy, how he wants it to care for the welfare of minorities because, as Jews, they had viewed persecution firsthand. And he lays out this free democratic society. And today, Israel is exactly that. A democracy, pluralistic, free. You have members of parliament from every facet of society. So that's Israel, how it was formed, how it developed, and how Herzl's work was so inspirational and formative for the Jewish state. Now I want to read something else. This is also from February 14th, but 1989, from Ayatollah Khomeini, who, in response to the Rushdie affair, which was a situation where a book called Satanic Verses was published. Many Muslims felt that this was blasphemous and offensive work. And Khomeini took it a little bit further. And this is what he said. I am informing all brave Muslims of the world, the author of the Satanic Verses, a text written, edited, and published against Islam, the Prophet of Islam, and the Quran, along with all the editors and publishers aware of its contents, are condemned to death. I call on all valiant Muslims, wherever they may be in the world, to kill them without delay. This religious edict, or fatwa, led to Rushdie going into hiding for many years. And now when we look at Iran, Iran pre-revolution were in a similar situation. They hadn't endured the length of persecution the Jewish people had, but the Iranian people wanted freedom. They wanted more rights. They wanted a greater say in their country. They quickly seized upon it and turned Iran into an Islamic Republic. And they would unleash more persecution, more denial of rights, more brutality, and the exporting of terrorism like never seen before. So why do I highlight this? Why do I highlight the differences, the differences in culture, the differences in vision, and the differences in these two leaderships of the country? Because once again, we are talking about the Iran deal. Once again, we're hearing in the media that we're very close to a new Iran deal. The old Iran deal was not sufficient. It was a bad deal. It didn't hold Iran accountable for its terrorism. It didn't hold Iran accountable for the persecution of its own citizens. It didn't hold Iran accountable for the stoning to death of people and its executions. It didn't hold Iran accountable for the many crimes it commits in violation of international norms. No, it looked at one aspect and it then gave Iran billions of dollars and we saw what they did with that. They extended their influence from Tehran all the way to Beirut. Until next week, this is Kasim Hafiz for the Kufi Weekly. For Zion's sake, do not remain silent. Thanks for 
Thanks for checking out today's episode of Kufi Weekly. If you enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the latest news from the Middle East, along with topics involving U.S.-Israel relations, please be sure to like and subscribe. And remember to click that notification button so that you are notified every time a new show is uploaded.